Damo. 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 <laughs> Hello, my name is Very Hairy Mike Goldman, and welcome to another episode of On the Mic. This is Damien Thompson. Hello, welcome to the show. Hey, Mike, how you going? Oh, let me tell you a bit about this guy. He is organizing a massive event to raise money and awareness for the QIMR. Yep, GBHC Research Lab. That's the one. And uh, and also your whole life raising, well, part of, very big part of your life, raising funds and awareness for uh, leukemia. Yep. And and so much more. Very exciting. This yeah. event coming up. Welcome yeah. to the show. Good to see you. Nice yeah. to meet you for the first time today. You too, mate. Yeah. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about this because it's been something I've wanted to do for a long time. Um, interview me or to on, well, be on the show and yeah no you're right yeah just, so. just yeah and it's uh I've got it's posters. An honor to be here thanks mate I've got posters Go for it. ask me whatever all you over like. my room <laughs> um no I, I, i've done little things yeah. here and there light the night the Kimi foundation um i've i've been part of um a high tea where we raised some money for jeff hill mm-hmm. um who started the gbhc laboratory mm-hmm um, in terms of the research, and it's just a follow-on from that. Because well, this is the big one. You've got, yeah, you've got it is. Australia's greatest comedian, so Dave Hughes, up. performing. Yeah, yeah. Aust- Australia's arguably Australia's greatest MC, Mike Goldman. Oh. Oh, I promise I'll shave for the event. I know there's, there's probably a lot of people from QIMR Who's going, arguing about why, that? why are we having this hairy-faced dude, a little bit of overweight ex-reality TV host, hosting our event? Well, no, I'm going to shave, and I'm oh. going to the gym <laughs> like you, and uh, it's going to be a fun night where we've got uh, all sorts of uh, auctions and lucky door prizes and yep, we uh, we, we've got uh, a, f- a few really cool uh special surprises happening on the night and of we course do. the one the only dave hughes very excited to be performing Th- this is a little bit of dave hughes if you've got no idea who the hell i'm talking about too much, too much stuff beeping at us a lot of beeping going on i open the fridge i'm 10 seconds into my decision making process <laughs> And it starts beeping at me, hurrying me up like it's a lunchtime rush and it's a queue forming behind me. There isn't fridge, calm down. <laughs> How good is he? He's great. It's going to be a massive night. And it's, it's at Cloudland as well, yes. which is the number one entertainment venue in Queensland. Like yep. this is, if not Australia, this is the coolest venue in Australia, yep. I think. I remember when it first opened, which God, it would have been like almost to a 10 years, probably more ago now, would it be? Oh, it'd have to be at least... Ten years, yeah. yeah probably I remember a little bit more. Felt, yeah. But the the Bickles, the guy that own, owns it, the family that own it, have just they went all out on designing this place and making it look oh. absolutely spectacular. When you walk in, it's like five stories high of this huge, you incredible see space. Something different each time, yeah. And you know what yeah. I love about that place? They've got the, all these little quirky areas that, that you, yeah, you I, never know about. You keep finding it like the top bar. Yeah. They've got this other little private bar back room. Yeah. It's like a, a war bunker where you see out the front. Anyway, yeah. we're going to have heaps of fun and the tickets are on sale right now. Yep. And if people want to get those tickets to to come along and have fun, you don't have to be in, um, involved in the organisation or even know anyone that, that's that's been through leukemia or cancer or anyone that works in the research industry. Just come along for a hell of a fun night and raising money for a good cause. Absolutely, be there, have fun, yeah, and feel good. Oh, the date! Oh, the date, twenty fifth of October. Yes. There it is. There's the link on your screen. So uh, and you'll be able to click on it in uh, in my bio or the uh, the, the link in the uh, Facebook description or Instagram or where wherever the hell this is going. We're on Spotify, iTunes, and everything now. It's ridiculous, yep. mate. Um, well, that that's going to be really really exciting. And uh, we're is. just we're just on the phone to to Claire Bla- Claire Blake, who's an old mate of mine. I used to work with on radio at Triple M. Yeah. And she mm-hmm. uh, is at the QM QIMI now. QIMI. Yep. And uh, and she she says some of the things that they do there the the research that they're oh. turning over on a weekly basis yeah. is absolutely incredible. The team there blow my mind. Um, I'm the dumbest person in the room by far each time I go. Um, but, that, but that's not well, take hard. take me, then you'll yeah. feel a little bit smarter. Yeah. <laughs> hey, come on I'm now. the world's first living brain transplant donor. <laughs> All right, I'll put you down. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I should have been put so, down years ago. Yeah, right. So I've been there, been for a tour a few times, and um, they've got people for the talent from all across the world um and these guys are just absolutely incredible in terms of what they do um the the team that they have i think which is very important it's like a it's a really good culture and mm-hmm. a feeling going into that place like something is being achieved and mm. is not far away so that, that caught on to me my enthusiasm 
um, has been driven from those guys. Mm. And this you're is like where you're we like their today. mascot. They're all talking about you, Pretty saying how amazing you are and everything you've up. been through. I mean, you had lung transplants, bone marrow transplants. Yeah, I mean, radiation replaced. burns. You, you mean I saw photos on your website, and your, and your tongue was pretty much black from radiation. Yeah, burns. like eat you for have a while. been put yep. through the ringer, my friend. Yeah, and it's... and and then to go from that. And be the face of an organization and, you know, someone who is going along and doing podcasts and interviews and all this kind of stuff mm. to, to, to help raise funds and awareness and help people like you mm. that might be going through the same thing. How are you adjusting to that way of oh, life? Because what did you do before? Uh, well, I was a pretty simple guy. I still am. Um, <clears throat> camera shy. But it's just... Yeah, when, and when a, a normal so tradie important. job or something, didn't you? Oh, yeah. I was just cooling system mechanic, yeah. Mm. Uh, we worked for family business back home in mm. Townsville. Mm. But you're a loved member of the community, you know, just just doing yeah. your thing, happy to, happy to be part of it. Now, all of a sudden, you've gone through all of this and you've, you've fought and you're winning. Yeah. And, yep. and now, now you're, you're helping other people and being the face. What's it like? Um, yeah, it's a big transition. But it's, it's slowly happened over time. Um, the guys, a lot of people have nagged me for a while to look, you should really start talking about your story and share it. And I, mm. I was reluctant to do so for such a long time. And why's that? <clears throat> oh, I, I did. I, I didn't feel the attention should be directed to me. Um, uh, but having said that, it, the the guys changed my mind in terms of the the power of just my story alone mm. and the awareness it mm. brings. Yeah. And um, how it can be an inspiration for others? Yeah, you can. I mean, how did yeah. you feel when you first found out that you had leukemia? Oh, it sucked. Um, yeah, that was a terrible feeling. Uh, everything changed like that. Yep. Um, so I actually walked myself into emergency uh, with incredible pain and shaking. And by this point, I could barely breathe. Um, <clears throat> I said to the guys, I didn't know what was going on. I said, look, I need some pain relief. Give me some good stuff. And they thought I was a junkie walking in at mm. three in the morning mm -hmm. um, in my PJs, you know. Mm. And so... They put me in bed, gave me some Panadol, uh, did a blood test, said, look, we're going to have to see what these results are before we give you anything. And I think it was about half an hour later, came back, massive dose of morphine, you've got leukemia. Straight away they knew within half an hour. So it yeah, wasn't like no, do a blood a test, go have a, a meeting with 20 doctors and they figure it out. No. It was like, boom, they yeah, know straight away. Yeah. And, yep. and, and what did you do? Well, how, do how do you take something like that on board when you oh, find out? Well, they were pretty strategic in how they did it. Um, I was just relieved to get short-term pain relief at that point. So turns out I was making all sorts of dad jokes and things um but afterwards the reality kicked in because you were given like morphine yeah and I, morphine and I, I had a motorbike ride. accident a few months ago and yeah. and like i broke oh, my collarbone and punctured shit. punctured my lung and wow. i was a mess and yeah. and they've just pumped me full of all sorts of crap and i was cracking jokes I and bet you were. flirting with the nurses and <laughs> yeah, well, I male and female me, yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> i was having a great old time and yeah. then, then the harsh reality wakes up and hits you that something's actually wrong and oh, yeah. who's the first person you told when you found out Oh, my best mates. So I've got a circle of really good mates. Um, and that was probably the hardest thing, trying to stay together, um, keep it together to tell those guys. Yeah. Uh, but it was Father's Day too. Hmm. Um, so turns out dad was out the reef. He got the news. He tried motoring back in. Um, and the guys were on their Father's Day expeditions, right, with the family. Mm. But they still came in. They just dropped everything, came into the hospital, and mm. we regrouped and went How did your there. family and friends handle it? Because you hear stories of other people when they tell their friends and family that they're sick or something's wrong with them, then they all start losing it. And it becomes a real burden for the person who's actually sick because they're it, worrying it about was, their friends and family. It was terrible. So, yeah, half the battle for me, it turned out, was uh, juggling... Family and friends. Their, their emotions. Anxieties and, yep. Mm. And that was terrible. So what would you say to someone watching this right now if they've got a, a member of their family or a friend who's told them that they've, they've got something wrong with them? What would, be, what would be the best way to help someone like you in that situation? Uh, just just ask, ask questions. Um, and basically, just relay emotions. Would be, be open and honest about how you actually feel. Mm. Yeah, and, and take one step at a time. Don't get too far ahead. Yeah, yeah. right. Because, I, I mean, I know when my, my dad had uh, he was diagnosed with cancer about nine years ago, eight or nine years ago, and it's like, right, 
okay, I'm going to do research. I'm going to find all the things that help make him better. Like, I'm, I'm not a doctor. I haven't, I haven't yeah. studied. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, been paid billions of dollars by governments to, to research and find cures for these things. And, yeah. and then all of a sudden you go down the rabbit hole and you think, oh, the doctors are all horrible. You know, they're, they're stopping things like CBD oil. And, yeah. but, but there's so much to be said for incredible medical research. And, and all the doctors who I've met, professors that I've met, I was talking to one last night who, you know, helps um, cancer patients, um, you know, he analyzes their blood and, and figures out the best way to, to keep the, the cancer through, to, away from the vital organs, which yep, is like yep. eating the right fats. But there's so much stuff like that you, you can look at, but so much to be said for people like at, at QIMR and, and different research institutes, the Charlie Teo Foundation as well, who I'm an ambassador for. Uh, and, and the great work that they do is, is something that you just cannot overlook. No, absolutely not. You, you have to do what you're told yeah. in these situations. And um, and we've got yeah, one of the best systems in the world. We do. I mean, when you look at places like America where it's like yeah, cancer, is, yeah, it, it's, is it, it's like a, a, a big business be, and they just churn grateful. them through. Yeah, be grateful, yeah. be thankful. I, what, what helped me the most was comparing myself to people worse off. Mm. I always felt better about that because I'm like, oh, look at this there's always someone worse off than I'm you. not there, you yeah. know. Um, and in doing that, that mm. kept my focus in check, mm. and it, it made my journey a lot easier. But now you're helping those people who are worse off than you. Yeah, well, exactly. And I always was going to. I'm like, you know, once I beat you, you bastard, I'm mm. gonna, you know. So you're in the clear this. now. What's the story? Yeah, cancer's gone. Been gone for a while. Um, I've uh, the. GVHD, which took my lungs, is semi What's that stand for, G GVHD? A graft first host disease. So mm. I'll give a brief explanation on that. I got my brother's donor cells. Uh, so when they gave me chemo radiation, mm -hmm. they give you um, bone marrow, essentially my brother's bone marrow. So I've got his DNA and everything. So all the crimes are committed now, it's his fault. <laughs> <laughs> You can do whatever you want. Exactly. So, um, but what that does causes an autoimmune condition, and it attacks your body. Now, it ravaged me everywhere, and, and um, we were able to identify the points pretty clearly because I got some terrible photos of me—just uh, full body rash, eyes peeling out of my, you know, skull. And was that from the treatment or from? That was from the cure. This is from the cure. The cure. So, um, the cu this is from it cured the, you. It, the, it cured the cancer. Yeah. But it started... Caused an adverse reaction. graft first host disease. Yep. Oh, that started... Oh, okay, right, okay. And that's why I'm here. And then you had to get rid of that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. How, and so how did you get rid of that? Oh, they just basically nuke you with immunosuppressants. Because I saw photos of you, you had like a black tongue. Yeah, yeah. No, and that like was what, else did, what else did the radiation do? Oh, um, <clears throat> it burnt all of my throat. So Whoa. it came to a point where... They tried even the softest of foods to give me to continue eating. Yeah. Um, but I could not put even a banana on my tongue. So they're like, yeah, we're going to have to put you on the feed bag. And, and then it, it ended up healing? Pain, pain, pain. How long did it take to heal? Uh, that, was, yeah, that was two weeks or just short of two weeks. That one. Yeah. And then I got diarrhea. I lost uh, seven kilos in just over a night. Yeah. Or a day and a night. Mm-hmm. Um, and that lasted three months. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was uh, turned out, was a graph as host disease. Started in the skin, eyes, went to the guts, uh, kidneys, liver. Isn't it crazy that you had leukemia and then the, cu the cure for leukemia gave you graph graphic host disease yeah it is and That's... and then you had to do something else to get rid of that but to you mentioned about your uh, your brother uh donating uh blood to you and did uh, what did he donate to you like uh, uh, his bone marrow his actual bone marrow yeah because they, they had to take your lung out where'd their lung come from is it like another so that donor was down or? the track um that was after the gv after the bone marrow transplant um and the graph first host disease um attacked my lungs so i fought that off for about Right, so five years. So from the cure for leukemia, graphic host disease, it stuffed your lung and you, you had to get a new lung. That's it. Two. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Two both? You had yeah, a double two. lung transplant. Yep. Whoa. I yep. knew you had one. I didn't know it was both. Yeah, no, both. Yeah. How, and, oh, what was that like? Don't do things in halves. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's got a routine he's working Good on. Job. Dave Hughes, look out. Look out. Date is on your screen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I had that done. Thought everything would be sweet, you know, and could see uh, a new life on the horizon. But 
because of the immunosuppressants and the treatments, and this is where this is where I'm passionate about changing how we actually treat and um, a rejection o- overall, but starting preferably starting with graft versus host disease is that because I'm on these heavy immunosuppressants, my immune system can't fight off to its full potential um, infections. Right. And it's not just me, obviously, a lot. Of, this happens to every patient. Um, so I'm constantly trying to fight off a invasive fungal infection that's now hurting the lungs so you, again. So you've got to stay away from people who... Mm. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, cheers. People who are... you got to stay away from... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, that was a really bad joke. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's horrible. Yeah. I mean, you have to stay away from anyone that's sick. You're like, well, Absolutely, get yeah. Yeah. Um, so shopping in enclosed shopping centers, big crowds, you know, music festivals, not mm. like I was ever a fan, but things like that. Yeah, you know, we go to those so, sweaty bodied things. Yeah, you're right. Watch it dirty. on TV. Yeah. Watch <laughs> Netflix. And so how do you keep your immune system strong? Are you on um, uh, like diet, really, really good? Because there's a lot of research that says your uh, whole immune system is run from the gut. gut so health. you're taking yep. like really strong pre and probiotic. No, well, I was um, I was taking using juice, uh, mixing my own fruit and oh. veggie juices. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, for years, and that really helped. It um, maintained me and kept me at a, a level of performance where I could um, do the activities I needed to do. Mm. Um, still so very get, limited, but so you got to be prepare yourself in case you got to fight off uh, some sort oh, of. Oh, you've always got to look, look ahead. I mean, is, this is not a paid advertorial, although he does give me some for free occasionally. <laughs> uh, a mate of mine, Jonathan Elliman, his um, his dad, Doctor Elliman, he's a uh, a microbiologist, and he makes what I think is the greatest pre and probiotic in the world. Right. Uh, he he discovered it through you know thirty years of his own research by accident because. These two strains of, uh, of of probiotic killed all the other pre and probiotic in his lab, and he's like, "What is that? We're gonna find what it is." Wow! And so he brought out this product, and I used to get the flu once every year at least, yeah. and I've been sick for like five years. I mean, and I have to stress that this is absolutely not a paid for ad. My dad takes it; and he's a cancer for like nine years. So I'm gonna get you some pro good, man. This this is the shit. Seriously, it's well, such good, and it doesn't make you hear about it. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So that you took you took a lot of juices and and how how did you change your diet? Like what what kind of foods did you, and what kind of research rubbish. did you do on your own? That, that oh, you, I did a lot of research. I, did it help, or do you, you think it's better to just nah let the um, doctors do their thing? It took me around in a circle and brought me back to the fundamental, um, basic consistency with diet and exercise and mm. routine. Don't overstretch. Don't. Don't overstretch. Yeah. Oh, well, you. I oh, know. So with with every, that's the term I use in, with um food. So don't don't feel like you need to try this mm. um to fix yourself because the chances. I oh, don't overdo what you mean. Yeah. 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 Cool. Um. And so you so did you up the uh the exercise thing a little bit yeah, more than you had before? Yeah. Yeah. A lot actually. So, um, I'd put hundred percent into things I commit to and. Uh, so the exercise routines that I was doing, I wanted to maintain that, but when I couldn't, um, I'd still push myself to the point I'd pass out, and I did that a lot. Um, really? Yeah. Do you still train that hard? <clears throat> yep. Yep. And I, I get bored doing you know twenty minutes of yoga on YouTube this morning. I'm like, ah, I can't do it anymore. Uh, yeah. how, how, everything you've been through. Yeah. How do you get so motivated? Is it because you you think to yourself, well, oh, you know death was chasing me so much at one one point it's not going to get me again i'm going to be as fit as i possibly can is yeah, that is that what drives you just the i'm just willing to fight fight it fight back yeah so i was brought up playing sport and i think i got that from sports um and so you know when you're training now i guess you're just thinking about when you're a kid and how hard you trained and yeah you know just, just trying to get back there yeah yeah exactly but what motivates you like what i mean other than obviously the will to live uh, well this what, this the fact that i can help out yeah, yeah, and being an inspiration to others, well, and, and helping I, raise funds and awareness to 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 uh, help yeah, find a cure. Just make a difference. Uh, I I see my kids; they've been lucky enough to start families and move on with their lives. Um, something I'd love to do in the future, um, but I can't live with the thought if I was to mm. sit back and one of those one of their kids got cancer or something related to similar to what i had and i'd done nothing about it mm. yeah i don't think i could live with that thought so 
that's a lot of driving factor too. Mm. So what are you doing on a day-to-day basis now? I mean, you're starting your own organization, so you could put on massive events like this we one with are. Dave Hughes at Cloudland. The address yeah. is on screen. Get your tickets now. Yeah. And, uh, and, and so how's that coming along for you? Uh, so, yeah, we've been extremely busy. Uh, I've, I've been putting a team together um, of really talented guys mm. uh, and passionate people, which is... It's, Give them uh, a shout out. Yeah, I'll, Blair Johnski at uh, Cloudland. Um, he's running our events, actually. He got things kicked off. Good on you, Blair. Thanks, mate. Yeah, Blair, accountant in the city. Stephen Brakey. Um, Pamela, I think you've spoken to Pamela. Yeah. Her, her hubby's actually going for a kidney transplant because of the whole um, transplant, uh, bone marrow transplant process. He had leukemia as well. Oh, We've got very similar yeah. stories. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Yep. And so so you, you had the lungs replaced. Yep. Uh, which 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 happened because you got you had the disorder after the That's the right. cure for leukemia. Yep, yep. Um, did you you didn't have a kidney transplant or anything no. else like that? Or what what other things did you have to get done? Oh, the so bo- I had the- little surgeries like stomach surgery, mm. um, my eyes, cataracts, laser. Um, I've had both my hips replaced because. Um, so you got metal hips? Yeah. Oh yep. wow. What's well, that feel like? Oh, it's fine. Yeah, in the scheme of things, it's mm. a small thing. I got another friend who had that done, and it's it's such a massive operation. But like <clears> hips <throat> are better than ever. Yeah, no, what, are they made out of titanium or something? Like yeah, that? titanium. Crazy. Yeah. Show you the X ray after. It's no, cool. no, it's all right. You can keep that to yourself. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I had, I, I was <clears throat> both of them were buggered. Mm. Um. And I was walking around on um, an absolutely crushed femoral head on the right side for a long time. So the pain was enormous, but. How, could, why was that crushed? It was, yeah, crushed all the way down. But what, what was that from the... Uh, from uh, the treatment. So over the yeah. years, the uh, chemo, radiation, it just, it steroid just use. wore your bones down. Just wore, yeah. Wore Is that why you needed the bone marrow transplant? No, no. That was out of the blue. Mm. <clears throat> that was from the cancer. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. And how do they do a bone marrow transplant? <clears throat> bone marrow is the bit inside your bone. Yeah. So, yeah, so they used to drill into yeah. your hip, which has the, the most... Um, bone marrow storage mm. um, and actually reverse cycle it out pump and, it out yeah and then and they put it in somewhere else <laughs> yeah and yeah exactly and then put it in yeah it's, that's crazy but now they have uh, gcsf needles which um trick your bone marrow out into your peripheral system yep and so they put you <clears throat> on a machine similar to dialysis i think mm. with one tube in this arm another in that arm suck the blood out here Put the um, red cells back in this uh, back in this side, so they suck all the goodies out. Out of the actual bone. Out of the peripheral blood. So just out of your out of your vein. Yeah, but if your blood's going here, isn't it going over that side anyway? Yeah, that's right. So the all the process is they're wanting to just take your blood, and the machine spins it around, takes all the good cells. Yeah. And then it's transferred back into your body um, with no good cells, oh. essentially. Okay. So it does take a while for the patient, um, or the donor, to build back immunity. Hmm. Um, but it, it, there's no real side effect to them, which is good, apart from a little bit of they can experience sternum pain. Hmm. That's bizarre. That I just can't get my head around the fact that they're just taking blood out of that arm yeah, and putting after. it into that arm, but it goes out into a machine. Yep. And, and like, what, what, is that an expensive treatment to get? Like, if you had to pay for it yourself, luckily we live in an oh, amazing yeah. country. Yeah, where, it would be. I mean, yeah. what, what would all of the costs be for something yeah. like this? I mean, oh, if you were yeah. born in the US or, you know, somewhere like that, you know, you, I don't oh, want you to know, think you, about that. You, you say a third world country like India or, yep. you know, um, so I'll give Pakistan you an example. Um, like one of my first bags of chemo was thirty two thousand dollars. First day. Yeah, first day. Wow. And I had a week straight of that. Yep. And, and so what about that? Because um, like there's a, I know that there's an organization uh, called Gilead and they have this new machine that takes the blood out of your body and fixes your DNA and pumps it back in. Wow, brilliant. And, and this, this can apparently defeat leukemia. You have to do a little bit more research than I've done. Um, but I've done a little bit of work with them in some, some other areas. And uh, you haven't heard anything about that? No, I haven't. Um, and so, no. I mean, obviously, uh, QAMR do some you know, incredible work and in the, the research and the not, not just in areas of leukemia. Like the other day I was, no. I was reading, they'd, uh, they'd, they'd found 25 new strains of, uh, of skin cancer that, uh, 
is hereditary or, or something they're like that. doing this through yeah. genetics now yeah. they can they can pick and choose yeah, you can and say okay you're gonna you could you're susceptible to this so we exactly, need exactly yep yeah. and they're at the point where they can re-engineer now re-engineer um, your dna yeah whoa yeah, are we getting towards X Men kind of shit here? Yeah. Or what? <laughs> yeah. So, do you have claws? Yeah. Well, it would be nice. <laughs> Probably going to be there one day. Yeah. Um, well, I am an experiment, a walking experiment. Are you, so. Why are you working experiment? Um, because just the amount or the direction we've taken over the years, it's been so tricky to handle with the graft first host disease. Mm. It's literally been. Is that, is that not a we'll normal thing this. that happens when someone gets leukemia and then the treatment for that gives them? Well, there's host? a standard treatment, mm. and if that doesn't work, you got one, two backup, I suppose, before it takes a toll on your body. Mm. Um, whereas me, I've been able to go to one, two, three, four, and just extend. Mm. Um, I think partly due to my exercise routine, maybe, mm. um, but. I'm just, I'm just very lucky. Mm. Yep. So imagine the the money you'd have to pay if I mean you're in the US yeah. and you'd be bankrupt, or you'd have yeah, to be a millionaire to be able you, to afford yeah, it. Yeah, you wouldn't really get this far. Mm. So lucky here. Yep. That's good. And mm. so tell me uh, about some of the people that you've helped already starting your own organization. And you know, you mentioned a couple of you said your kids, like that there are other kids who have got leukemia or or cancer of, of some My, sort yeah uh, kids, yeah. And, and you you talk to them you help them through it um and how, oh, yeah, how are absolutely. you an inspiration to them and 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 you, you you sound like you've got a great affection for these kids and you say my kids i do um so all the guys we're like a big family uh you, you get put into a leukemia foundation it's like it is a dormitory for um cancer patients and you all get to know one each other uh one another throughout the time and your treatments and um i'd seen people come and go and uh that's affected me over time because you get re real close to people and obviously um unfortunately they it, they didn't make it for whatever reason mm. um and that didn't sit well with me so i really thought i could do more and that i would do more mm. um so i've just been actively trying to think of ways I can involve myself in in basically anything that will help. And this is where it's got me today. Um, mm. I'm doing things for the Leukemia Foundation right now, actually. I found a study on virtual reality headsets um, that ease the pain and anxiety through chemotherapy treatments mm. and the whole process. So I went and bought some, gave to the guys and said, look, try these out. Uh, if you like them, do a bit of a study. Tell me what you think. If you like them, I'll go and pitch to the Rotary Commission and get some money try to buy and get them. them to fund it. Yeah. And what what are they looking at through the VR headsets? Is it a game or something? No. Well, of well, they can do what they like. But in in terms of meditation, just to take them away from the reality of the harsh treatment, mm. even for ten minutes, half an hour, whatever. Mm. Um, they can go sit by a lake. Mm. They can go and... Especially if you're in a hospital and you can't leave the hospital. You oh, put VR on and all of a sudden you're, you're on the beach else. relaxing. Exactly. And so how much was meditation a part of your treatment? Well, my meditation was YouTube clips watching fishing. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that's that was the basics. But I could have done with virtual reality headsets a lot more. I was actually yeah, right. thinking about it way back then. Because mm. uh, so you had a lot of anxiety. I did. And how did you deal with that? Just the fishing video clips, or yeah, was it was take my mind away, call mates, make terrible jokes. Um, I, I was known for that, especially on morphine, and I had a lot of painkillers. So, um, yeah, majority of my time was distracting myself. Mm. Yeah, and so it makes sense. So, uh, virtual reality is a big one for me. Yeah, great. And so this event coming up, yeah, the uh, details are on your screen. Uh, Tell me, you got to get up on stage and have a little chat to everyone. Yeah, and so you you get a bit of anxiety about that, or how absolutely, you absolutely. I'm not a stage person. Talking yeah. in front of crowds and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it. it. I'll find a way around it. Yep. Yeah. Just think of everyone naked. Oh yeah, that could work out. <laughs> just, just get just get blotto. You know, apparently, if you're really funny on morphine, just pump yourself full of that a yeah. little bit and get <laughs> up there. You'll have them rolling the ass. Dave Hughes won't want to get on stage. You'll be so funny. You'll be like, <laughs> I can't follow this guy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that, but. Um, yeah, more than willing to. 
and we'll see where it goes. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Um, well, dude, thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah. Uh, Thanks for having it, me. It's, it's incredible to hear about your journey and everything that you've been through and, and the, the great work that you're doing. Uh, how do people follow you and find you and, and talk more to you if they, they need help? And uh, more so, come to the party and donate and get involved. Oh, look, I started a Facebook page uh, called Bionic Man, as all my doctors started referring to me as. So I thought <laughs> that would be, yeah, uh, quite relevant. And um, I, I basically use the page to promote awareness, um, show things I'm involved in, and uh, just, just generally share and chat mm. about um, cancer-related gvhd related things and mm. just transplant rejection as a whole mm. do you get sick of saying that word cancer maybe we maybe we should use, come up with another word yeah, uh, like mr pinky mr P yeah. you know and, and just say okay up. everyone we're gonna be talking about cancer but every time we say the word we're gonna say mr pinky instead i like that angle yeah so mm. you know the best way to beat mr pinky <laughs> is to just you know be positive yeah yeah listen to your doctors Yep. Eat the right foods, yeah. juice, exercise, yep. just do and Mr. Pinky told. will be gone. Yeah, it sounds so much gone. better to say Mr. Yeah. Pinky. Just come up with a random name. Yeah. Oh, sold. <laughs> Let's use it. <laughs> Good luck, mate, on your Thank journey, you. and uh, yeah. look forward to seeing you at the, the big gig at Cloudland. Yes. Let's raise too. some money. It's going to be a go. fun night. Yep. Excellent. All excited. Thanks, dude. Cheers. Yeah.